So the topic we are going to see today uh, is structural damping measurement and uh, comparison for different components. And uh, we took uh, six different uh, components from two different industries. So one is automotive, the other is sports equipment. So in the automotive industry, uh, we took wheel, a connecting rod, and a gearbox casing. And uh, sports equipment, a golf club, and uh, two cricket bats of different sizes and weights. So what I'm going to present today is comparison of damping for these various components. So here is an outline of the presentation. So to begin with, uh, how do we get damping? We do it through an experimental method, and it is experimental model analysis. So we will see the experimental model analysis done on automotive components and the sports equipment. And with the data from the experimental model analysis, we extract the damping values using curve fitting, and we present the results from the damping extracted. So this is a picture of the experimental setup for measuring damping on the wheel. And after performing experimental model analysis, so there are various ways of doing experimental model analysis. In this experiment, we did single input, single output testing, and we used an instrumented impact hammer to provide excitation to the wheel. And uh, with accelerometer, we measure the vibration at various points. And uh, with the input and the output signal, we compute frequency response functions. So this shows the frequency response function amplitude and phase. The amplitude, the y-axis is in decibel, x-axis is frequency, and for the phase, the y-axis is in degrees, and x-axis is frequency. Now, RFP stands for Rational Fraction Polynomial. So in the previous slide, you saw the frequency response function. Now the frequency response function should be used to estimate the damping for a particular resonant frequency or mode. So this is looking at one resonant frequency, and the band here signifies the set of points that are used as an input to this rational fraction polynomial curve fitting algorithm. And using those uh, data points, a mathematical model is fitted. So it's a parameterization technique where the parameters are the residue, natural frequency, and damping. So when the curve fitting is performed and a parameterized uh, equation is obtained, we get the values of the parameters. And one of the parameters, as I mentioned already, is damping. So the curve that we get after performing the curve fitting using rational fraction polynomial fitting is shown here. And this will overlap precisely with the measured data. And uh, after the curve fitting is performed for each of the eight frequency response functions, we get the computed resonant frequency and Q factor. And from the Q factor, we can estimate damping. As I mentioned already, the plot, one of the plots is the input, which is the measured data. And the other plot is the output, which is an output from the curve data. So the plot in red is measured data, and here the plot in green is what you get from curve fitting. And uh, if the curve fitting algorithm uh, works precisely, what we would get is something like this, where in the region of the resonant, um, resonant frequency, the measured graph and the mathematical model should overlap exactly on top of each other. Now, I can repeat the procedure for multiple uh, modes or resonances in the frequency response function. And uh, when we do that, we can extract the modal parameters, that is resonant frequency, damping, and uh, mode shapes for all the modes. So here, we are showing the results obtained after performing the curve fitting for the first mode and second mode. So the resonant frequency is at 280 hertz, and the corresponding Q factor is 361.39. And for the second mode, the resonant frequency is 765.89, and the Q factor is 550.41. 
And both of these modes were analyzed using the rational fraction polynomial coupling techniques. Now, we move to the second component, which is a connecting rod. As you can see here, this is an experimental setup. Here, you are mounting an accelerometer here. And here again, we use an instrumented hammer and perform a single input, single output test. These are the computed frequency response functions, the amplitude graph and the phase graph. And uh, after performing the curve fitting, we extract the damping values. And the curve fitting technique that is used here is again rational fraction polynomial curve fitting. This is the amplitude versus frequency plot. And after doing the curve fitting, you get these uh, plots. And uh, these should match precisely with what we get from experimental data. This is looking at one FRS, and uh, the plot in green is, a is what we get from curve fitting, and the plot in red is the measured data. And we repeat the procedure for the multiple modes in the frequency response function. This is the first mode, second mode, and third mode. The corresponding resonant frequencies and two factors are listed in this table. This is the third component. This is from a motorcycle. There is a cover for the gearbox. Here also we performed a single input, single output model test with an impact hammer and an accelerometer to measure the responses as you see here. This shows the measured frequency response function, the amplitude and phase plot. This is the performance of curve fitting. This is showing curve fitting results for one FRF, for one resonant frequency. The compiled results for the first mode and second mode, the resonant frequency and the Q factor. Now let's put it all together for the three automotive components that I presented so far. So we use the same curve fitting technique and we extract the resonant frequency in Q factor for the wheel, connecting rod and gearbox. Um, there is no need to uh, look at the resonant frequencies and do any comparison. But then an order of magnitude values for the Q factors will throw some light on what are the materials used here and their corresponding material damping values. So this plot, what we are looking at here is Q factor is on this axis. And uh, for each of the modes, the first mode and uh, second mode, we are plotting the uh, Q factor so that it gives a visual comparison of uh, which component has a lot of damping built in, which component does not have. And uh, that is presented in this uh, plot.